All right, I'm going to go ahead and get started because Lauren's breaking up so much. Hopefully you guys can hear me clearly. And I'll go ahead and just get started. Lauren always likes, likes to introduce me. You guys hopefully know who I am. I'm the author of the book, Food Truck 101, Beginner to Winner. I've got a number of years of experience in food trucks. I started working in food trucks in the late 70s. Got a lot of restaurant experience. I worked for big chains. I worked for fast food restaurants. I had my own hot dog carts and food trailers. So I kind of have a good idea of what I'm doing when it comes to helping you guys learn the food truck business. So tonight's topic is going to be all about the business plan. And I noticed that someone said they had not written a business plan and they hadn't failed yet. So whenever I hear someone ask me that or say, why do I need a business plan? It's just a food truck. It's no big deal. Even if you've been open for the last five years and have not written a business plan, the question I would have to you is, have you made as much money as you possibly could? And if you haven't written a business plan, you don't know the answer to that question. You can be happy with what you've made, but you haven't maximized the amount of money you could make. So that's why you want to write a business plan is so you know exactly what you're doing day to day, week to week, month to month. You guys wouldn't have a food product and not follow the recipe you've written for it because then you have a food cost problem. It's the same with your business. Your business plan is just the recipe for the success of your business. And it goes into all the details. Lots of folks get really, really worried when they start thinking about a business plan because it involves two things that we all hate. We all hated essay questions in high school and college, and we all hated math in high school and college. And that's all that a business plan is, is an essay on how you're going to work your business and how it's going to operate. And then it's got some math tied to it on the financials. So I tend to make it as easy as I possibly can when I go to write a business plan and when I go to help someone write a business plan. So the very first step in writing a business plan is to identify your mission. And that's what we're talking about there, your continuing mission. The mission is real simple. It's what you intend to do with your business. And it's not, I want to make a bunch of money. That's not a mission. That's a goal, perhaps, that's a desire, but it's certainly not a mission. So I want to read to you guys the mission statement that I had for the last trailer that I had. It was a pirate-themed trailer, and it was called the Pirate's Galley. So the mission statement was the Pirate's Galley will be a unique and positively memorable food vending experience bound by the moral, legal, and ethical standards of our industry, ensuring we deliver high quality and delicious food served by a fast and friendly staff in a sparkling, clean, and sanitary environment. We will support the local community through ongoing charitable donations and volunteer work. That was the mission of the business. Nowhere in there does it say that we're going to make a whole bunch of money and we're going to get rich. But if we hit all of those different points that I mentioned in the mission, the end result should be we make a whole bunch of money. And the way that I make sure we make a whole bunch of money is I have a well-written business plan with well-thought-out financials. So if I'm missing a number here and there, I know I need to work on it to get my profitability back where it needs to be. So a mission statement should be the vision of your company. It should also speak to the core values of your business. What makes the business tick? What's the heart of your business? And the core values could be anything, but it has to be something that you're going to maintain and something that really speaks to you as an individual. Then you got to have goals and objectives. And in my particular mission statement to answer those three things, the vision was unique and positively memorable food vending experience. We dressed up as pirates. The area that I live in does a pirate festival every year. We have a pirate ship that takes people out three or four times a day out in Destin, takes them out on the ocean. So the area 
is permeated with the pirate theme. It made sense for my hot dog carts and for the food trailer to have a pirate theme. We just fit in with this area. The core values for me, moral, legal, and ethical. You guys see that all through the Facebook group. I want everything to be either bound by morality, legality, or ethics. Anything else, I'm getting out of the group. It does not belong there. Those are the core values. And then the goals and objectives pertaining to food. It was fast, or I'm sorry, it was high quality and delicious food. The service was fast and friendly. The environment was sparkling, clean, and sanitary. And then, of course, supporting the local community. Those things I talk about all the time, too. QSCC, Quality Service Cleanliness Community. So pretty much I'm writing your all's um, mission plan or your mission statement with everything I do in the Facebook group. Now, the thing about the business plan is you got to prep for it. Food Truck 101 is written to prep you to do your business plan. If you've done all of the different steps throughout the different chapters, it's led you to this point. You have all the information necessary to put together a pretty decent business plan. Just a couple of little pieces of, of paperwork that are available in the group, one of them being a break-even point, and then you got your business plan and you got financials. And this is the quote that Lauren got me on the last time. She said, I love that quote that you had, and I could not for the life of me remember it. So this time I wrote it down. And it's proper preparation prevents poor performance. That's what your business plan is. It's your proper preparation so you don't have poor performance in your business. So as you can tell, I'm all about writing a business plan. I'm all about the numbers. I like things to make sense. As I mentioned, the break-even point, and I talk about this a lot, the break-even point is the amount of money it takes for you to pay all the bills, including yourself. You're allowed to pay yourself a salary. So you paid all the bills, you paid your salary, and you paid for all the food it took to generate the sales to get to that point. It's a mathematical formula. You can look it up on the internet. It's a simple formula once you understand the two major components of it. But once you have the break-even point, then you know exactly how many sales you need per day, per week, per month. You can even break it down per hour. And once you break it down per hour, you can actually translate that into the number of people you need coming into your business every single hour that you're open. You hit that number of people and they buy whatever you think your average check's gonna be, guess what? You got a real good shot at hitting your profitability. Now, what would stop you from hitting your profitability would be your food cost. So you have to figure your food cost and then verify it. That's why chapter two talks about your menu, getting it written down in recipes and cost it out to the penny. I never estimate. I can't stand when somebody says, yeah, just $2 is the condiment cost. No, it's not. Because if you're guessing at a condiment cost or you're guessing at a weight for a recipe, you're not going to be consistent, which means when I come in today and get something and you were a little bit heavy handed with it, and I love that flavor, and then tomorrow you go, oh, I need to back off on that. I was a little bit too heavy. I get the same product. It tastes different. So now you're inconsistent for me. And now I don't want to come back because I want to get the same food, the same taste day after day. So you've got to Figure the recipes, write the recipes, and then verify them. How you verify a recipe is you take an inventory. If you sell something simple like a hamburger, and you know all the different condiments that go on it, you should run a sales report and it says you sold 300 hamburgers. You should be less 300 buns. You should be less 300 patties of hamburger. You should be less the condiment portions for all the different condiments you put on there. And if you're not, you got a problem. You should have only used 300 hamburger buns, but you use really, when you count, 350. Where did the other 50 go? Did you drop on the floor? Did somebody steal them? Did they not get rung up? Where are the missing uh, buns? So you got to get detailed. You got to get serious. That's what the business plan does. If you're not writing a business plan, then you just think your food cost is awesome. 
you think you're doing a great job. Then you got to track your expenses and your sales every single day. I wrote down notes back when I very first did a hot dog cart or a hot dog trailer, actually. Everything was written on a piece of paper. I knew exactly how much I spent in labor that day. I knew how much I spent on all the different products I had that I was selling, which back then was onions, chili, mustard, ketchup, and we had sodas and chips. And that was it. And I sold my hot dog for a dollar. I sold chips and soda for 50 cents. So you could buy a combo meal back in 1981 for $2. And that was my hot dog trailer. But I kept track of everything. Simple menu, I still had it all written down. I knew exactly when the day ended what my food cost was for the day and how much profit I had at the end of the day. And even when I had a bigger trailer with a more complex menu, did the same thing. Super important that you track all of your sales because the sales come back to verify what your business plan said. So I'm going to talk real briefly about the ugly part of the business plan, and that's the math. The way that I do a business plan, I don't start with, okay, how much do you think you're going to do in sales this year? And then make all the numbers work going down. You can't do that. You have to build it up. We are in a limited environment. We have limited space, so we can't store a whole bunch of food. We're open limited hours because we can only store so much food. We can only cook so much food at a time. We don't have a 400 square foot uh, or 400 foot cubic foot um, refrigerator or cooler in the back to go pick up another case of fries. We have the reach in. We have a stand up refrigerator and that's all we got. So we got to make it work. So we build up our sales, what we can handle, what we legitimately do. I tell everybody to start, your first goal should be to take one order every minute. That means your incoming order capacity is 60 per hour. You can't take more than 60. The only way you can take more than 60 is to either have a really, really small menu, to have a very, very limited menu so people have very few choices, or you have a second area open to take multiple orders. But here's the balancing act. If you have two people as a cashier, can your kitchen keep up with two people? Typically, the answer is no. Very rarely do you have sufficient cooking space to handle two sets of orders coming in. So that puts us back to our limit, our limit of 60. So now we got to match all the food to that. We got to match and balance all the condiments to that, all the drinks to that. There's no point in having 500 drinks if the most you can sell in a day is 180. No point in carrying that additional food. No point in spending that money. I'm all about making stuff balance. I'm all about making stuff work. So let me talk about a couple more things here real quick on the business plan. Part of the chapter I spent getting you guys prepared and I have several pages of things to think about. And I did that intentionally. So you see how much detail needs to go into it. Will you need all the information I wrote? Not even close. But I want you to be thinking about all the questions I asked. Like, for instance, how many employees will you have? Are they going to be full-time? Are they going to be part-time? How much money are they going to be making? How is their rate going to change over time? Will you be giving them raises? Will you be giving them bonuses? You have to think along those lines to know how you're going to be spending your money. It's all a business plan is, is how am I going to get money in? And then how am I going to spend it? It's just pre-planning your expenses. And it's just a matter of hitting what you said you would do as far as the sales projection goes. And I have a business template, business plan template. And it has directions that tell you what should go where. And it gives you little pointers on what you should say. Like the elevator pitch is just a couple of sentences. Imagine being in an elevator and you're trying to sell somebody on your business. What could you tell them in just a couple of sentences that would get them excited to want to come to your business and eat, or maybe even come to your business and perhaps invest in it? 
perhaps they want to open their own licensed version of your food cart or maybe even become a franchise. So you always want to have those things in your mind, the elevator pitch, the challenge for the guest. What's the issue your guests are facing? And now it's, it's a multitude of things that we could put. 20 years ago, you couldn't put near the kind of things we can put today. Like the challenge is there's no gluten-free gluten trucks. The challenge is there's no fresh fruit trucks. The challenge is there's no, um, you know, Latin food. Whatever the, the type of cuisine is that's lacking in your area, you can fill that in as a challenge. It could be that people that come for your, uh, your lunch may not have anywhere close to where they work. Maybe the industrial park has no food trucks visiting. The restaurants are too far away. So all of the questions that you need to ask yourself and then answer to build your business plan are there. Then I've got a spreadsheet that you can download that helps you to build the business plan. So you can put in all the business financials. I pretty much do everything for you except write it. And that's all you got to do. It's your dream. It's your vision. Get excited about it and blow your own horn. That's the hardest thing that people have to do when it comes to writing a business plan is bragging about themselves. Get excited and let people know, hey, this is what I plan on doing. And I am thrilled to be able to share my idea with you. And scrolling through some of the other things on the business plan. Competitors. People say, yeah, I'm the best. I don't need to check out anybody. I check out everyone. Whether I was running a restaurant or I was doing the food truck or the hot dog carts, if there was a competitor, I went and introduced myself. Especially if it's a food truck, especially if it's a hot dog cart. And here's what I'd do. I'd give them my business card. And I had a... a generic business card just had my name and my phone number on it didn't say i ran a hot dog card or food truck or anything and i would say hey i'd love to try some of your food here's my business card if you ever have issues and want to sell this thing give me a call i'll buy it from you now what that does is that plants a seed of doubt in that competitor's mind oh crap maybe i can't succeed at this and i gave them a safety net they can sell out to me because i'll buy it so now they're a little worried. Maybe their idea wasn't as good as they thought it was. Had they written a business plan, they would have no worries in the world because they would already know that they can sustain themselves where they're located. But if you plant that seed of doubt, you might chase away a competitor. But you always check out the competition, always. What do they do better than you? There's going to be something they do better than you. Are they friendlier? Are they faster? Does the food taste different? Does the food taste better? more seasoning, less seasoning. There's always things you can look at on a competitor to either learn to get better or at least know that you are better, but you always got to check them out. Always got to check them out. And you want to look at their prices, their menu. Is it bigger than yours, smaller than yours? How's their service? Are they fast? Are they friendly? What's the reputation that they're developing? Because everybody's got a reputation. You just got to understand what it is. Do people think that you're slow? Do people avoid you when they are pushed for time? You want to think about the location. Is their location better than mine? How do they get to set up in front of Lowe's and I can't? You always got to be doing those comparisons. Because you got to eat every day of your life. So you might as well, if nothing else, go check out the competition when you're not working. So the business plan I go through asking questions about how you're going to acquire your guests. You know, you're going to do social media. You're going to do boots on the ground marketing. Are you going to do a combination of the two? Are you going to have a loyalty program? You're going to have a website? All of those things. We talk about revenue streams. There are different revenue streams based on what type of food truck or trailer that you are. You could have a hard lines if you have a big trailer and you have lots of room you could sell merchandise if it makes sense i used to sell because i uh, vended on the beach i would have a rack of sunglasses you can buy 
one of those big cards with the, the cheap sunglasses on it for about five dollars and then you could sell each set of sunglasses for five dollars each or at least you could back in the day when you're on the beach people forget sunglasses or they lose them in the ocean and the ocean carries them away and they would come that's a quick you know five dollar sale so you could have hard line sales that's one revenue stream you could do catering that's a whole different revenue stream you could do private gigs you could dedicate every saturday i'm only going to do corporate things on saturday and then work to line up enough corporate things to make it worth your while you know, if you have a hot dog cart you could do birthday parties i used to do birthday parties i would partner with a guy that had the little blow up stuff the bouncy houses and all that and I would tell him, if you have somebody that's interested in a food truck, here's my business card. And I'd get, you know, maybe one or two a month from his recommendation. People would say, hey, I want to have, you know, your bouncy house, but I need a food truck. Do you know somebody? Get recommended. There's always ways to get your name out there. But unless you write a business plan, you're not thinking of them. And you, um, another thing about a business plan I haven't mentioned yet is it is a living, breathing document. It is always getting better. It's always improving. You're always changing it. You're always making it better. For an example, the financials are not one and done. You don't project out three years or five years and then go, yep, I'm going to do it. You're going to revisit those plans every few months. One of the companies, actually the company that taught me how to do a business plan we revisited our plans every six months and we revised them. And what we found is some stores that, that paid a lot of attention and really worked on the plan didn't do much revision. It would be some tweaks here and there, but it wouldn't be, you know, hundreds of thousands of dollars. It would be hundreds of dollars in tweaks. But the ones that just sat, and uh, said, okay, I'm going to write this baby out. And they would write it out in 15 minutes and turn it in, would have the $100,000 in revisions because they were just guessing. You can project, but you can only project out so far. And you have to revise those projections. And I did so many business plans where I was revising them. I actually won a number of awards for having the smallest revision amounts. Because once you do it enough, you kind of know what the sales peaks and valleys are going to be, especially in a certain area. One of the things that I do that there is not on any other business plan out there for a food truck is I have what's called a base day sales. And a base day sales technically is your break even point. It's your break even sales for a single day. There is no point in you opening up if you know you cannot hit that break even point. Because what does that mean? If you don't hit the break even point, you haven't made enough money to pay all the bills for that day. And the bills had to be broken down into daily amounts. I saw somebody post uh, this week, a couple of days ago, they were talking about one of their first events and they were happy with the sales and it was under a thousand dollars which is fine there's not a problem with being under a thousand dollars but what the problem that i saw was all he did was account for the food so he put up his uh, sales total you know 800 900 whatever it was and i made 700 something no you didn't because basically all he did was take out the difference in the food that he bought for that particular day the food is only one expense you got for a day. You plan on having your licenses renewed next year, so you need to set aside money for the licenses every single day. You plan on marketing, you're going to replace your feather flags, you're going to uh, be buying more material to uh, maybe rewrap your building, you may, or your food truck rather, you may have to redo your menu, physically print out a new menu. Those are all marketing expenses. You need to set aside money for marketing. You need to set aside money for repair and maintenance because you know at some point something's going to break down. So all of those expenses, even though you're not spending that money today, needs to be set aside so you'll have it when you do need it. Because it's no fun 
to have to pay a five hundred or a thousand dollar expense off of a single day's worth of sales. But if you've been budgeting and setting that money aside, guess what? You got the money there. Still hurts, but at least you're not worried about how you're going to pay for food for tomorrow. So you got to have that break even point, and I call it the base day sales. So every day that you go out is either going to be the break even day. It's going to be higher or it's going to be lower. And it's okay to be intentionally lower if you know that's going to happen. In my area, if I go out and vend in November and December, I know I'm going to go under the break even because it's just cold in Florida. And locals don't get out. There's not enough snowbirds down here to keep the sales up for a food truck. So I would plan on those being less than my break even. So money I was making in the summertime, I would have to set aside to get me through the winter. And then again, I, if I had not had a plan in place, I would be suffering all of November, all of December, and most of January. Because it would be, I don't have enough money. How am I paying for my bills? So business plan helps you get around that, helps you do, to understand what's going on. So no, you can download the business plan. I've also got a, a video that goes in detail on how to write it. Then I have another video that goes into detail on the financial side of it. So there's two videos they are each about an hour long that go through step by step by step. And that's in our groups. It's in the file section for the narrative part and the uh, spreadsheet. And then the videos, if you go to the event tab, go to the past events and just scroll. There'll be two of them back to back. And they both say business plan. One says the narrative, I think, and one says the financials, I do believe. But that is really the extent of this particular chapter. It's an important chapter. And I just, I absolutely cannot stress enough to take it serious. Because again, I opened the chat on this with people tell me they don't have a business plan and they think they're fine. They don't know they're fine. They might be happy with the money they're making, but they may not have made the potential they could have made. And I'm honestly, I don't like wasting time. My wife will tell you that I hate wasting time. And if I don't plan things out, I'm wasting time because I don't know what my potential is. Okay, next week's chapter is what originally was going to be the end of the book. It's called Ready, Set, Go. But as I got to that point, I started thinking of things I needed to add. So there's a whole bunch of bonus chapters coming after this one next week. But it is called Ready, Set, Go. And as always, if you guys have bought the book, please leave a review on Amazon.